Study showed that mental illness has been exacerbated and affected um, in 50% of Americans. So 50% of Americans are saying their mental health has been affected by COVID-19 and the coronavirus, according to a study. Yeah. So it's not just, man, it seems like there's a drag on people's soul. That's part of it. But even statistically, 50% of Americans are saying that the coronavirus has really increased their mental illness. Yeah, you know, the, and I think, so just to be honest with you, I think even I, I think I am struggling with depression and anxiety, and I think so many people are today. So in my own story, uh, we were, you know, Ben, it was the first time I had an experience of what I think, you know, just haunting, crippling depression. It was just very brief. It was like, it felt like maybe 10 minutes but I felt like I was suffocating. Yeah. And, I, and it was just, the, it was the first time I think in my life, because I've always been like a glasses half full, yeah. super yeah. joyful, yeah. you know, fun, slapping my, yeah. slapping my knee, yeah. you know? Yeah. And this was just like, there wow. was just so much with the kids and with the book and with like our TV show and all the other stuff that we do. I was just like, ooh. And, and in a way, I think it was a really good experience for me to have because I've read a lot about that experience. Mm -hmm. But to just get a tiny, tiny taste of what some of our viewers You're are right. experiencing, some of them every day, yeah. you experience that too. Yeah. And we should talk about that. But this, people, people need help right now. Yeah. And they need to understand that like, okay, uh, I'd, I have not traditionally struggled with mental health and I'm struggling. And people need to know, I think this kind of experience, it comes in waves and we have to just ride those waves out, don't we? Yeah, the Bible says all your waves and billows have passed over me. And what I want to remind people is it's just a wave. Yeah. It's just a wave. It's going to pass. Now here, here's what's very important. More people have died from the coronavirus. This was weeks ago, by the way. Yeah. More people have died from the coronavirus than all the people in America that died in the Vietnam War. So wow. it, we, when we say we live in crazy times, that's not, that's not like hyperbolic exaggeration. But the fact of the matter is, the Bible says hope deferred makes the heart sick. That's, that's what it says. So we thought we were, I, I prophesied and predicted, not prophesied, I, I predicted, in May, I'm like, you know what? I think May, by May, the coronavirus is going to have subsided. Mm -hmm. uh, now we're July 30th, 2020, and it's and President Trump said it's going to get better, worse before it gets better. Yeah. When he says it's going to get worse before it gets better, you yeah. know it's going to get yeah, worse. Yeah, especially with someone like, yeah, that's true. And so, so all of our, as an aggregate, our hope has been deferred. And now, uh, not just the macro, but the micro, the individual yeah. person, we're feeling the sense of, anxiety and depression and the bible says anxiety in the heart causes depression so yeah. in the bible enough anxiety will eventually tip over to full-scale avalanche depression yeah so i do think that's something that that we're feeling but i want to say the the b clause and the opt-out clause for anybody who's watching it doesn't just say hope deferred makes the heart sick it then says but when not if but when the desire comes it is as a tree of life and I want to encourage you and tell you that the desire is going to come, that the tree of life is your reality. I love the, the imagery, the archetypal imagery of Genesis and Revelation, the river of life flowing, the, the, the leaves that give healing for the nations. This Eden is not just something that happened in Genesis or a garden city in Revelation or Jesus rising in a garden. This garden is a state and frame of mind that we can experience today if we don't defer our hope. Circumstances can get deferred but not hope. If we choose to say, I'm going to decide and make covenant with my eyes that no matter what I see, it's not gonna impact or affect what I say. I will choose hope now. Oh, expectations might be deferred or circumstances might be deferred, but not hope itself. I can keep that in my head and keep that in my heart. Then when the desire comes and proves a tree of life, I'll say, God, you've been faithful in the past. So I might as well be faithful about the future and fulfilled today. And I know these are dark times, but th this is an important message from Proverbs. You know, we have a lot of people who, we have a lot of people who, feel now more than ever, they're not ever gonna stop feeling crippling anxiety or right. crippling depression. I think that's the thing that really pushes people over the edge to take their own life or to do something really foolish. And I think, um, I think one of the things we just really wanna say to you if you're at home is that that's just a lie from the enemy. It the, is. The biggest lie from the enemy is not, you know, about 
you know, that you're going through a hard time. Or, it, the biggest lie that the enemy, I think, will tell you, one of them, is that not only is it bad, it's going to be this way forever. And Things I th are I th never going to get better. You're always going to be, de yeah. And th yep. this is, and it, the truth is, it's not. Your body is constantly changing. Your brain chemistry is changing. Your circumstances are changing. Right. And if you're still alive, God still has something amazing in store for you. And we have, I've known a lot of people, because we have a big church and a big ministry. I've known a lot of people who have for years struggled with anxiety and depression and took their own lives. Yeah. And, and wrecked a lot of people, just, you know, spouses, friends, just miss them. And then I have other people who had it just as bad as they did. I know one guy who had it for like 20 years and then broke free, broke yeah. free. And God's doing these amazing that things in his life. Me. That's that's my story. Tell me too. about that. That's so, my story so too. Have you, so, and a lot of people, there's also people today who are watching, and maybe this is you, where you did break free and you've been free for years. And now with this coronavirus thing, yep. it's like springing up again. Did that happen? So this happened to you. Have you had any like feelings? Yeah. Yeah. So I went through 10 years of chronic depression. Got 10 here. years. Nine I years. forgot about that. Years. I thought it was like, how, how old are you again? I'm 32. 32. So, so it's basically my mostly adult. your adult life. Yeah. yeah. And then I got healed for years and then fell back in and then got out again. How did you fall back in? What was that like? Um, well, I, I mean, to make a long story short, I got diagnosed with complex post-traumatic stress disorder. And what that means is you didn't just have one traumatic event. You had a series of traumas one after the other. Yeah. Kind of like when the messengers came to Job and said, your possessions got stolen. Then they came and back. You, and, you, but and you said, had a real trauma, though. I mean, because a lot of people, I hear like girls in L.A. are like, I have post-traumatic stress from, you know, no, losing no, yeah. my job. You so, actually so lost. So mine came from... Um, not just like romantic heartbreak, that was part of it, but also it came from my, my sister dying, it came from my brother dying, and it came from uh, suicide ideation. So not to mention there's, there literally is a guy who, who looks at my travel schedule and he calls ahead like news stations and stuff in protest. He's actually stood outside of an event I was speaking at protesting with a sign. And so trying to deal with that as a very young man over the years, yeah. uh, you, you go through stuff that you think, I, I had these panic attacks, I'd be driving in my Jeep. And the, the, the hardest thing about panic attacks is you don't know when they're gonna come. And what's that's what's so, so scary about it. It's yeah. when you suddenly get seized yeah. by an oppressive anxiety and you feel like somebody's holding your head underwater, that's, that's what it feels like. Yeah. Heads be, and so you start panicking and you don't know when it's gonna come. And then you panic over the fact that you could panic at any moment and it just is triggered at, at random intervals of time. And so I literally, I'll be very honest with you, I haven't shared this very much, but my counselor told me that I had the, one of the most difficult cases of, this is what literally my counselor said, you have one of the most difficult cases of depression I've ever had to treat. Wow. <laughs> so when I'm talking about this stuff, yeah. so when Job had the messengers come to him and say, your possessions got stolen, then they come and say, your livestock got stolen. Then they come and say, your kids died. Mm -hmm. Then his health goes away. That's what's called complex grief. It's when mm -hmm. one series of emergencies happens to an individual. That's not happening to our culture. So one suicide hotline or, or mental crisis hotline mm -hmm. has increased by 1,000% in the month of April. 1,000%. Wow. wow. So this is something that, that we're feeling all over the place. So if I could just encourage you watching, you are not alone. You're not alone. We are in this together. Bobby knows what it's like to struggle with depression. I know what it's like to struggle with anxiety and panic attacks. You're not alone. We're going through this together, but this is just a wave. We are going to get to the other side. I promise you that.